Yes, it's a cycle showing its wheel that just resembles to that of your cell cycle. Now you can very well correlate the cell wheel with that of your cell cycle. You can see the picture. Your body cell which is the structural and functional unit that has to undergo various renewal process called as the cell cycle because it has to maintain the cell population and this sequence of events is called the cell cycle. Our cell cycle has got two big divisions or two major parts. Let me mark it for you. You can see that this is the largest part of your cell cycle called as interphase and this one is smaller one called as mitosis. Now we will first name the various phases of the interphase. Concentrate on the right side that this is the G phase. It takes 8 hours to sometime years so that the cell remains in this phase. The next phase is S phase which is called as synthesis phase. Again 8 hours are required for the cell to stay in this phase. Then the third phase of interphase is called as G2 phase. It takes 2 to 4 hours, right? And can you imagine that uh, the process of mitosis just takes 30 to 60 minutes? Is it it's strange enough? Now we will individually learn the phases of the interphase. So first of all, concentrate on the G1 phase, which is gap 1 time phase. What happens here? In this phase, we can observe that the cell is going to produce more organelles and it has to synthesize more proteins, enzymes and uh, also something to repair the damaged structures and for this it has to require thymidine dimers, right? So means here the synthesis of RNA and protein are supposed to be done here along with the production of the organelles and various enzymes too. Now in the picture you can see the second phase of the interphase that is the synthesis phase, right? And this synthesis phase is meant for the production or synthesis of DNA as you can see in the green color portion that DNA replication has to be done and DNA polymerases which are enzymes they are supposed to be produced and uh, what it has to do it has to prepare an extra copy of the DNA why because it has to be next transmitted into the daughter cell that happens in the process of uh, mitosis which we will learn later on so the synthesis phase is showing the production or replication of the DNA right now kindly concentrate on the third phase of the interphase the gap 2 phase this gap time is required for the production or accumulation of energy and the arrangement assembling of the microtubules here what happens the cell growth is required by increasing the cytoplasm right so in this gap 2 period we expect increase in the amount of cytoplasm right in the meanwhile we will never forget that uh, after gap 1 phase there is a checkpoint why it is required because this checkpoint is supposed to uh, verify that the environment is favorable for the next step of DNA synthesis so checkpoint is very much required like that of the exams which we take for the students to check whether they are ready for the exams in which they are supposed to appear right now another checkpoint you will observe after the G2 phase right and uh, this checkpoint ensures that is all DNA replicated well or uh, all DNA which is being damaged should be repaired and uh, all these environmental uh, prerequisites should be assessed before moving into the mitosis so these checkpoints are very much required so 
after getting through the checkpoints and passing through the interface that was the biggest phase of the cell cycle and now the cell has to enter into the real activity time the mitosis which has got four phases the prophase the metaphase the anaphase and the telophase and here let me mark the abbreviations to uh, memorize them these are the p mat so let's get started with the first phase of the mitosis called as prophase what happens here if you can see the picture in a little bit in larger view that here the chromosomes they are now becoming visible and the nuclei they decrease in size or rather disappear and another thing you observe here that the centrioles they are gonna move towards the opposite poles and uh, what else that as they have moved towards the opposite poles of the cells you can observe the microtubules they are also arranging themselves and in this way they are making the mitotic spindle right and uh, here lies the chromosomes which are very much visible here right so let me highlight the chromosomes becomes visible centrioles they move towards the opposite poles of the cells and mitotic spindle forms now in this metaphase what happens that the nuclear envelope that disappears and the mitotic spindle takes the central position of the nuclear envelope and now what happens that uh, if i have to enlarge it and show you that this central transverse plane is taken up by the chromosomes or centromere and uh, they lie along the equatorial plane and uh, this plane is just perpendicular to the plane of the cell or the plane of the mitotic spindle right let me repeat that the centromere has taken the transverse plane as that of the equatorial plane which is perpendicular to that of the long axis of the cell as to the mitotic spindle right and uh, this transverse plane or equatorial plane is also called as metaphase plate and now you can see that the chromosome has got two sister chromatids right and uh, these two has got the upper this is the short arm and the lower or bottom long arm right and they are in the center connected and this region is called as centromere and here exactly lies the kinetochore which is a hook like uh, you would say structure present along the centromere right and what's special then we can see that the microtubules they are anchoring or being attached to this kinetochore right and called as microtubules of the spindle fibers right now you can see the third phase of the mitosis is the anaphase what is going to happen here if you can see that now the chromatids which are sister chromatids they are supposed to migrate towards the opposite poles of the cell and the separation of basically these sister chromatids is taking place and there should be a split of centromere right you can see here very well and this happens why because the kinetochore microtubules they undergo depolymerization and as a result the chromatids are moving towards the poles right and uh, another word help you to remember this phase that this a stands for away so in anaphase these are uh, chromatids or you would say sister chromosomes they are supposed to move away from the center and towards the pole right now in the last phase of the mitosis which is the telophase you would say what is going to happen you can observe that here the cleavage furrow 
appears in between the center of the cell and now we can see that the chromosomes they are forming like a cluster or crumple the parents and the mitotic spindle is shown a be uh, broken down and uh, what happens is now what we see that the chromosomes they are forming a tangled mass right and what else is there we can observe the appearance of nuclear envelope again and uh, definitely the spindle begins to split rather and nucleolus is trying to become more visible so at the end we would say that the cytokinesis has been completed and what cytokinesis is it is basically the cytoplasmic division so before we observe the karyokinesis means the nuclear division and now we have observed the cytokinesis which is the cytoplasmic division right and now in this picture the thing should be kept in mind that now at the result of this telophase the two daughter cells with the same genetic material which is present in its parent cell is present in the daughter cell so now you can well observe that how this cell cycle is uh, occurring first the interphase then uh, you can observe the mitotic phases the prophase and metaphase anaphase and hence the telophase right and now in the picture you can see that the parent cell has to undergo the dna replication and then you can see the chromosomal alignment and through the process of hold this uh, mitotic activity and finally you can see that the cystochromatids they are being separated and finally at the end of the telophase you get the two diploid cells two daughter cells with the same genetic material as that of the parent cell right so now you can see that after mitosis and the completion of the telophase you can observe another checkpoint that tells that whether all the chromosomes are attached to mitotic spindles means few questions should be answered or should be corrected before entering into any other phase so we are now ready to go with the cell into the g1 phase again or we can say that cell is ready to go in the cell cycle again or either enter into a quiescent or g0 phase right now we have to discuss that in our body what happens that there are three types of cell population number one cells are i would like to say libile cells or proliferative cells or you can say them as a renewing cell population and uh, you know what where they lie they basically cover your skin means the epidermis of your skin and especially the epithelial lining of your git tract and that of your uterus etc what they are gonna do they have to undergo regular continuous mitotic division and they have got the characteristic feature of proliferation this is one type of cell population another variety of cell population is stable cells what they are basically they do not ordinarily divide but whenever they get a particular stimulus or potential they undergo division process and uh, they are stable cell and the present where they are present in your liver as hepatocyte whenever there is an uh, injury or a disease or if a part of uh, liver is taken out rest of the hepatocytes they regenerate another example could be the smooth muscle cells and of course the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and yes the fibroblast of your connective tissue and the osteoblast that's supposed to cover the periosteal lining of your bone they come under the heading of stable cell they just need a stimulus to divide right yes the third variety of the cell are the static cell what they are they are totally incapable of mitotic division in the adult and we can quote the example of your neurons and the cardiac muscles and to an extent the skeletal muscles too now this picture tells you that after the telophase or end of the mitosis what happens that either the cell enters into again the g1 
फेस ऑफ द इंटरफेस और इधर इट विल रिज्यूम और एंटर इन टू द जी जीरो फेज एंड वॉट दिस फेज बेसिकली इज दिस फेज इज अ परमानेंट फेज एंड हेयर द सेल लीव यूजली द सेल साइकिल परमानेंटली एंड दे लूज देयर कैपेसिटी टू अंडर गो माई टॉसेस एंड वट टाइप ऑफ सेल्स आर सपोज टू टेक दिस जी जीरो फेज आर द स्टैटिक सेल्स एंड द स्टेबल सेल and as we know that uh, the stable cell can also go back to that of the g1 phase whenever they get the stimulus or potential to re-enter into the cycle whenever needed and uh, what else i have to tell you that certain uh, i would say group of the genes they are supposed to be proliferated under by the proto onco genes right these proto onco genes what they do they are supposed to carry out the cell proliferation but sometimes the mutation in this proto onco genes occurs and uh, in such a way that it is totally unchecked manner leading to the formation of the tumor so for the normal regulation of the cell cycle every uh, checkpoint is required everything should be okay and then the smooth cell cycle will occur okay